Hello, you guys. So our lesson for today is going to be about the characteristics of the conifer group. Now, let me start by telling you that the conifer group belongs to a bigger group of plants called the gymnosperms. Now, the gymnosperms are a group of plants that are the opposite of angiosperms. And remember, angiosperms are plants that make seeds that are covered by fruits. Now, gymnosperms is the other kind of plants that make seeds that are not covered by fruits, and we call them naked seeds. So, first of all, the gymnosperms are plants that make seeds, and those seeds are naked, which means that they are not enclosed in a protective covering, which means that they are not covered by fruits. And they have needle-like or scale-like leaves, and this makes them become evergreen plants, most of them, and evergreen means they stay green all year long. Also, they have deep growing root system and examples are like shrubs, and but most of them are trees. Now, some examples of gymnosperms uh, or types are cycads and believe it or not, 175 years ago, most of the plants on earth were cycads. Now, in your lesson, you are not responsible to know the other kinds of gymnosperms. You are supposed to know only conifers. But I want you to know other types of gymnosperms just for more information. Now, those cycads, they are mainly uh, plants that grow in tropical regions, which means that they grow in hot areas. And they look like palm trees, but they have cones in the middle, and those cones are large. Another kind of gymnosperms, again, you are not responsible for them. I just want you to know their, the other kinds of gymnosperms. So the other kind of uh, gymnosperms are ginkgos. And ginkgo plants, there is only one kind or one species of ginkgo. It's called the ginkgo biloba. And they survived uh, all those years because of the Chinese and the Japanese people. And they can grow almost as tall as 25 meters, which is really tall. And they can tolerate pollution, which means that they can survive in harsh environments that are, uh, that are rich in pollution, especially air pollution. Now, the other kind of gymnosperms, again and again, you are not responsible for all of those types of uh, gymnosperms, I just want you to know them, to have an idea, but you are only responsible of conifers. Now, the the other kind of uh, gymnosperms, which is called the nitophytes, the G here, over here, is a silent letter, so we call them nitophytes. They are the least to see, there are not so many on earth, and they live in hot and dry deserts of South Africa and some deserts in the western United States. Some are trees and some are shrubs and some are even vines, but they are not, there are not so many on earth. Now, the hot stuff is conifers, are also the gymnosperms that we are studying about now and those conifers they are again cone bearing plants when we say bearing we mean holding so they are plants that hold cones or they make cones that's why we, they are called conifers they are the, the largest and the most diverse we mean diverse with the it means that there are different uh, kinds of them or different groups of them for example pines, redwoods, cedar, hemlocks, and junipers. I got you here um, a picture of some conifers, for example, the umbrella pine, the cedar of Lebanon, which we draw on the Lebanese flag, the spruce tree, the larch, and fir. Of course, they are evergreen plants, which means that they keep their leaves that look like needles all, the, all year long. Now, how do they reproduce? Actually, they do with cones. Remember, angiosperms reproduce with flowers. Now, gymnosperms here reproduce with cones. And those cones have, to, there are two kinds of cones. One of, one kind is the male cone, and the other kind is the female cone. Now, in this picture, I got you this picture to show you that the male cones here are much smaller 
than the female cones, which look really bigger than the, fem than the male cones. And most plants produce both types of cones in the same tree. Of course, some kinds produce trees that make only male cones, for example, and another tree beside it make, uh, makes female cones. But most trees make both male and female cones in the same tree. Now, the difference between male cones and the female cones. The male cones are smaller in size and they produce pollen, of course. And the male cones produce many pollen grains that can uh, overflow the spaces between the cone scales and they can be carried by wind to the female cone. Now, on the other side, the male cones, um, they contain uh, at least one ovule, which, which is going to be a seed after fertilization happens. I mean, after pollination, when pollination happens and pollen moves from the male cone to the female cone, then the pollen will reach the ovule and fertilization will happen. Now, this is a picture to show you how a pollen cloud will uh, will be formed by all of the pollen that will be carried by wind from the male cones to the female cones. So the transfer of pollen from the male reproductive structure or part, which is the cone, to the female reproductive structure or part, which is the female cone. And the wind often carries the pollen. Pollen collects on the sticky substance produced by each ovule, which means that the, the female cone produces a sticky substance on the outside so that the pollen from the male cones can stick to it. And the scales of the ovule close and trap the pollen and then the seeds will grow and develop on the scale in the female cone. Now, female cones stay on the tree because, you know, they are holding the seeds, right? But the male cones, they will fall off after they shed their pollen because, you know, they finished their job. Now, what happens? Again, pollination, it's the transfer of pollen from the male part to the female part of the plant. In this case, from the male cone to the female cone on the tree. And then the wind transfers the pollen. And then the pollen is collected on the sticky substance around the ovule in this case, the female cone, and the scales of the female cone close to seal in the pollen. And then fertilization occurs or happens, and then the seed develops on the scale in the cone, and the female cones stay on the tree, and the male cones fall off. Now, the seed dispersal, or how do the seeds travel? The female cones increases in size as the seed grows, and the orientation on the tree changes, which means the immature seeds the, in the cones point upward and the mature seeds cone point downward. And they point downward because they are ready to fall off. When the seeds are mature, the cones open. In this case, those cones are the female cones because only the female cones hold the seeds, right? And then the wind shakes those seeds from the cone and it carries them away. And only a few seeds will land in suitable surroundings. Now, gymnosperms and the living word products from conifers can be paper, wood products. They can be used for rayon and clothes. And, you know, we can cut a lot of trees uh, for, you know, furniture and stuff. But remember that cutting a lot of trees is bad for our environment. Instead, we should plant a lot more. Thank you so much for listening.